Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidates interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Kathleen Fullen, and I would like to introduce Julia Matthews, running for Alder in District 12. As we begin, I'd like you to give an opening statement about the educational, vocational, and civic experience you have, which qualifies you for this office, and why you are running for Alder. Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Julia Matthews. Um, I have lived in Madison my entire life. So I went through MMSD um, and then I went to UW Madison for um, undergrad and have two uh, double majored in um, medical microbiology and immunology and molecular biology. And since then, I have been working in clinical research. Um, at uh, a location that is in the district. And then currently I work at UW-Madison uh, for the Center for Tobacco Research and Intervention. So I do database work, but with that, um, a big part of it is interpreting the scientific protocols and then working with all the different teams to come up with a database that will fit all of their needs. And sometimes they have, you know, very different perspectives and the different roles have different um, requirements and desires for what the database will contain. And so with that, I kind of have to uh, find compromises and facilitate communication between the teams. So I do think that that experience will um, translate really well to being an alder and working with the city, working with constituents and, um, you know, figuring out policy for the city uh, or, you know, helping with that. Um, and why I'm running, I love Madison so much and I have a little bit more time on my hands as I've progressed um, in my career. I have a little bit more kind of like flexibility in my life and I just really want to give back. I love, um, Sorry, I already said that, but I love the city. I really, really um, am excited to get to know the constituents better and to really be able to listen to them and help incorporate their feedback into how the city is run. And also um, just the timing of um, the last year, We, me and my partner have had to really kind of see the housing crisis head on a little bit with our... Um, our own living situation and had to find a new apartment in a very short period of time. Um, and it just, it's getting really hard out there. And, and with being from Madison and living here, I, I hate the thought that people are already getting pushed out of affording to live here. And as the city continues to grow, as it's projected to, I really hope that that the alders and everyone, and hopefully myself, can help find a way that people don't have to be pushed out of the city that want to live here, and that as we grow, the housing situation isn't um, isn't set up in a way that the only people who can afford to live here and move here are the wealthiest people. Um, and that's really kind of a huge motivator for me. <laughs> so what actions or programs would you support to enhance public safety in Madison? And in particular, what is your position on the use of body cameras by Madison police officers? Um, yeah, so I did go to one of the um, body camera info sessions that was held at the UW, um, at the Memorial Union, I think, if not last year, then, then the year right before that. Um, and I think that um, I am a little bit torn about body cameras. I'm very interested to see how the pilot goes. I know there's a pilot on the north side. Um, and definitely at first, like when I first heard about body cameras and that we didn't have them here and they didn't have body cameras in Kenosha, I was shocked and I was, you know, upset and thought, why don't we have that? That seems like such a simple thing to have. Um, and I do still think that it can be a tool that can really help with accountability and also help with um, transparency. Um, and so I am, I am, like I said, excited to kind of see the results of that data. But I do know that they're also 
there are other layers with body cameras, I guess, like there's still how they're coded, how the data from the, the videos are coded by staff and, you know, who has access to those videos and um, whether they're turned on or not. Um, but I really do hope that that will help. And I also do um, really appreciate the kind of increased um, transparency that there's already been with the new police chief. I've um, watched several of his press briefings on ongoing public safety issues, including one earlier um, this month. And it, um, I think it really helps to kind of show the public, you know, where we're at with certain issues. Um, and I know for that, especially there was reporting that the, um, a lot of the, the car thefts are, were actually like a lot down from 2022, which is exciting to hear. Um, and then I also support, um, the, the CARES program and just having like increased access to mental health services for people that are in need, um, as well as um, the future project of uh, the creation of the first um, permanent men's shelter to help with that, um, with, you know, getting people off the streets that need a place to live as well. What do you see as the most important environmental issues the city needs to address. What will be your priorities for council action on these issues? Um, so I think some of the biggest um, environmental factors for the city um, will be the um, water, uh, water contamination and PFA pollution with the lakes, um, as well as just continuing, I think the city is doing a lot already, um, or they're making good progress towards having cleaner energy and having, you know, lowering the overall footprint of the city. And I definitely think that those, um, that kind of progress should continue. But I do think um, that the water here is getting a lot more polluted. And um, as someone who has grown up going to these beaches every summer and also worked at them as a lifeguard for five years. I, I feel like the lakes are a big part of what makes Madison amazing and to see them kind of become less usable and become even like a danger to the people makes me very sad. <laughs> um, and then another uh, just thing that we will see how that kind of unfolds will be the noise um, from the new F-35s that are coming. Um, and especially in my district, um, it, it's kind of the, the most, the biggest brunt of the noise is going to be seen in my district. So I'm definitely starting to think of solutions and will be trying to work with the city to up noise mitigations and things like that for people. What is your position on increasing the pay for alders? Um, so I think that, um, I, so I had already decided to run when this was talked about at the council this year. So I didn't want to have any comments on it, um, at that time, but I, I personally was very, um, interested by the thought of having it be not raised to like, I think the highest amount that was suggested was like upwards of like 60,000 or something. I, I I did not necessarily think that was the right move, but um, I think there was a proposal for about 30,000. And what I thought about that um, is that one thing that that, that that increase could do is it could make it possible for someone who is maybe like a single parent or, you know, doesn't have a job at like the university or, you know, has doesn't have like a very high paying job it would give them the ability to do this work and also still maybe do a little bit more work, but make a lot more money or at least make a reasonable amount of money to take care of themselves. And at the same time, what that salary would not do is it wouldn't incentivize anyone to just become like a career alder and quit their, um, 
you know, if someone working like in administration at the university or as a professor, they're not going to quit doing that necessarily for $30,000 to be an alder, but it could really lift a lot of other people up and open the opportunity to them. What, if anything, do you think the city should be doing to support economic development? Um, I think the city should uh, continue um, with some of the work they have for like the pop-up locations, um, like of, of new businesses, um, as well as kind of supporting efforts to um, increase the diversity and give opportunities to people who haven't had as many um, opportunities or might not have as many resources. Um, I think that the public market will be a good place for small business owners um, that is going to be, right, could be an opportunity for a lot of new and um, minority business owners to be able to show off their businesses. Um, and I think that, right, continuing to kind of support um, more access to also um, businesses that are like amenities that people need as the city continues to grow, like making sure that we have enough um, grocery stores and like pharmacies and things like that that are spread out throughout the city to accommodate all the additional um, people that are moving here. How do you see racial disparities impacting constituents in your district? And are there any actions the city should take to address those? Um, so I definitely know that in District 12, there are, um, there are a lot of, I mean, the whole city, right? There are a lot of disparities throughout the whole city, but in District 12, especially, um, there are a lot with, uh, with regards to housing. Um, I think some of the people who live the closest to the airport and some of the housing that is out the closest to the airport. So like having the most noise impacts are a lot of lower income housing and um, more people of color. And I do think that that's something that needs to be kept in mind as we move forward and as we create more housing in the district um, is to make sure that it's being created in a way that increases access to, you know, better locations or just you know, healthier places to be um, at all income levels. And I do know there are certain organizations that are already kind of working towards this. Um, I know like the Commonwealth developments um, do have some, um, some apartments and areas in this district. And I really support the work that they're doing and just kind of making sure that we can have um, a community that is uplifting everyone and not leaving people behind. What are the most critical issues that you see facing the people in your district? And what would you propose to address these? Um, so definitely housing, I think, is one of them. Um, there's, uh, you know, there are a lot of really great neighborhoods in the district, and I know that they're full of people who want to stay here and want to um, just continue to have a good life in Madison. Um, another one, though, is uh, transportation. I know with the bus, uh, the metro redesign, some of the access to the more northern parts of the district were greatly decreased. And so that's something that I will um, be making a priority as I, you know, hopefully move forward on the council is looking at the ways that um, as we're working towards the north-south bus rapid transit, and even if that is not able to go forward, how we can get more access back to the north side of Madison. Um, and then, as I kind of mentioned before, um, the F-35 noise is going to be a pretty significant impact. Um, to the people in District 12 especially. And so I'm definitely gonna be looking at how the city can, um, can help with that. Currently, all of the potential noise mitigation money is coming from the airport. And so I will be looking at ways that we can kind of maybe have some of that support for people from the city as well. 
What would you like to say to the viewing audience as we complete this interview? Um, I am just very excited to get more involved in the city and especially with the Common Council. I've been watching Common Council meetings for a while and got to go to my first one in person a few weeks ago. And I just, I love the city. I love um, the creativity and just like the thought that goes into policy decisions. And I also just really want to be be able to listen to the people and get them involved much earlier in the process so that they can give their input and really understand um, how things work at the city level. And I just, um, I really care about Madison and I care about making policies that are going to help the most people and just making Madison with all of its current disparities, helping make it a place that is better for everyone to live. I want to thank Julia Matthews for speaking with us and the viewing audience for taking the time to know your candidates. I want to remind everyone that primary election day is Tuesday, February 21st, and the general election is Tuesday, April 4th. As with every election, please vote. On behalf of Madison City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, I thank you for joining us.